Hey everyone, welcome back. Dr. Kara here, board certified allergy, immunology, lifestyle, functional medicine doc. And today we are diving into something that affects everyone, especially though, those of us with eczema, those of us with Sjogren's disease, and those of us who are just aging. We're gonna talk all about hydration and particularly we're gonna talk about skin hydration, but these principles are going to carry over to other areas of our body too. Whether you're dealing with an autoimmune condition, allergies, or just trying to maintain healthy skin as you age, understanding the science of hydration is crucial. Do you think your moisturizer is doing enough? Well, be prepared to have your mind blown. Today, I'm going to talk all about a three-layer approach to hydration that has changed everything I thought I knew about skincare, especially before I did fellowship. If you are someone who suffers from allergies, autoimmunity, mast cell disorder, all those sorts of things, make sure that you are subscribed. We talk about all of that there from both the professional and personal perspective. Since I live with autoimmune disease, I live with Sjogren's, I live with dysautonomia. I know both sides of that exam room and I'm really excited to connect with you here. But let's dig in about skincare today. As someone who deals with Sjogren's myself, who has dealt with dry skin, you know, worsening over the last few years, this knowledge has been a game changer for my skin health. But I'm also able to take these principles and apply it to my nose health, my eye health, other areas of dryness that I'm dealing with in my body. I want to dive in by using a case study, but before we begin, hit that subscribe button and notification bell to join our community of health conscious folks. And let's dive in. I want you to meet Emily. She is a 35 year old patient of mine who came to me with severely dehydrated skin. She didn't like how her skin looked older. She felt she looked older than 35. I thought she still looked great, but I could see the dryness that she was worried about a little bit prominence in, you know, some of those fine lines were starting and she just didn't feel like her skin was glowing, right? She was using expensive moisturizers, but her skin felt tight. It looked dull and it was prone to irritation. What happens when our skin is dry is that barrier is typically leakier and that then results in our body losing more moisture. Does this all sound familiar to you? What made Emily's case interesting was she was doing everything right. She was using high quality products. They didn't have fragrance or other, you know, stuff in them. She wasn't using a ton of irritants. She was drinking plenty of water, but she still was struggling. And the missing piece was really understanding how these three crucial elements or layers of hydration can really help hydrate our skin. So let me show you how we transformed Emily's skin using the science of hydration. And I'm going to have some analogies to how we might use this if you're dealing with dry sinuses and nasal passageways, dry eyes, right? These things are overarching principles we can think about across our body. So I want to think of your skin's hydration and think of your skin like we're building a house. You need a foundation that attracts water. These are humectants. You need walls that hold everything together, the emollients, and a roof that protects it, the occlusives. And each layer is going to serve a unique purpose When used together, they create a perfect environment for healthy, hydrated skin. So let's break down each component. First up, the humectants, humidity, humectants, right? They're water magnets. They are ingredients like hyaluronic acid, glycerin, aloe vera. They act like molecular sponges, drawing water into your skin. And they're usually found in lightweight or gel-like products. Who needs them? They can be great for everyone, but especially if you have oily or combination skin, if you have dehydrated skin, it feels tight, uncomfortable, you have those fine lines that come and go, humectants can be really helpful. Pro tip is to hydrate your skin with some humidity first, right? This is why if you have the opportunity to go be pampered and have a facial, they're going to use some of that steam, right? That delightful steam. You do this in the shower. You could heat up a washcloth with some warm water and just let that sit over your skin for 10 minutes or so. If you're able to take a little mandatory me time and then put a product with some humectant on. What are we going to put on top of that? Because I am hydrating too. We are going to use an emollient. This is your skin's comfort blanket. They are those ingredients that we think about that just 
have that nice feel to them, right? That like comfy feel, shea butter, squalene, ceramide. Ceramides are like the glue that holds our skin cells together. They fill in the gaps between skin cells and they create this smooth, soft surface. They're perfect for drier or more mature skin, rough flaky patches, or people who have compromised skin barriers. Hello, Sjogren's, hello, eczema. Uh, that is a compromised skin barrier. You're going to think of emollients as the mortar between your skin cells. They're going to create a strong, unified surface. So that's why we often will recommend as allergists something like CeraVe because it has ceramides in it, right? Or even considering using an oral ceramide supplement, which can be helpful at replacing those ceramides as well. Third and final layer, occlusives. These are gonna seal things in, they're gonna lock it in. What are they? These are ingredients that tend to be more oily, waxy, mineral oil, certain waxes, petrolatum. Some people maybe prefer things that are more natural. Certainly this you know, beeswax would be something you think about, especially maybe more on your lips or beef tallow for people who are okay with using animal products. These are gonna create a protective barrier. They're gonna lock in all that goodness. One other product that I really love that works as an occlusive, it's great for the nose, coconut oil. Also smells like a vacation, but that can be a great occlusive. So maybe for your dry nose, you're gonna use some of the gel products that are out there, like Meal Med has a gel, AYR has a gel, and then you might use a little coconut oil afterwards on top. You might use your x layer, which is xylitol. That's going to work a bit like an emollient and a humectant to bring more moisture to your nasal tissues, soothe those tissues, and then use your coconut oil over top. And kind of see how this works. Your skin, sinus, nose tissues, and then we can think about it for our eyes too. We want to be a little careful, more careful about using some of those occlusives around our lash line. We wanna keep those mammobian glands healthy, but if you do have very dry skin, eczema, psoriasis, if you're gonna do overnight treatments, when we think about severe eczema, one of the real game changers for many families of children with eczema, and I use this often for patients, especially if they have bad hand eczema, dyshydrotic eczema, maybe they work in health profession or in the cosmetics industry, they're having to wash their hands all their time and their hands are really affected. We do something called wet wraps. You soak your hands in some lukewarm water, let them absorb. And then we're gonna do a series of moisturizers, right? We may use some medicated anti-inflammatories too, because inflammation is a huge part of this, if it's eczema. But then we're gonna layer things on. And the last thing we're gonna put on is typically one of those nice, thick creams. And one of the most cost-effective things, which I know, you know, I'll probably get grief for as someone who's, you know, a little more crunchy, plain old Vaseline is really well refined. I know there's lots of scare tactics out there, but if you are someone who is really sensitive, it can be a great cost-effective occlusive. And then you put some gloves on over top, old socks on if you're going to do your feet. I recently did this process with my heels because they were getting really bad the end of winter and do that overnight. And it's really, really beneficial. Now, an important note, if you are prone to breakouts, lower acne prone, you're going to want to use lighter occlusives, something like dimethicone and related things that are going to be non-comedogenic. That means not pimple forming. Okay. Non-comedogenic is a word you're going to want to look out for on labeling if you're someone who's acne prone. So here's how to put all this together. We'll review this one more time. How we're gonna label them or layer them. You're going to start with your humectants, that lighter, more gel-like product. This also could be soaking your skin in water, hydrating with some steam. That is also going to work similar to a humectant, okay? You're adding humidity, you're adding moisture to the skin. You're gonna follow that with emollient. Those are those nice ones like the shea butter, right? The ceramides. And then you're gonna seal it in with the occlusives, especially at night. Now, remember Emily, she was using this three-layer approach. We instituted this three-layer approach and her skin transformed in just weeks. The key was not just using one type of moisturizer, but really understanding how to combine all three for the maximum benefit. Here is what I tend to do. Someone with dry skin, I have a little combo skin still, a little, gonna see a little hormonal breakout from time to time. 
In the morning, I tend to use a light humectant serum, and then I put on a lighter emollient moisturizer. I still have a stash of my Beauty Counter Counter Match Moisturizer, which I love. That's been my daytime moisturizer for years now. And then I put on a mineral-based sunscreen over top. At nighttime, I'm using a little thicker product. So I'm using a thicker serum. I really love Primally Pure has one that is more for plumping skin, kind of more mature skin. So I've been using that. And then often I'll use the cream from that line too, which is more occlusive. It does have some beet tallow in it. So that does lock in that moisturize, moisture. On those areas that are really dry, my heels I was talking about, right? Then I tend to sometimes use a balm. I have a stash of my Beauty Counter Lotus Balm, which I have loved. But this is where like the coconut oil and petroleum would be really helpful too with layering all of those and then putting that balm over top and then putting some socks or some gloves on just to protect like your sheets and things from there. So understanding these three components of hydration can really revolutionize our skincare routine also can be a game changer for our nasal passageways, our sinuses, if we're using these same concepts and applying them and tweaking them just a little bit. So whether you're dealing with seasonal dryness, chronic conditions, or just want to maintain healthy skin, this approach can work for you. And if you're looking for more information and support in your immune health journey, make sure to join my free Facebook group, the Becoming Immune Confident Community. I've also created a free immune system disorders pre-appointment workbook. It is packed with helpful questions to ask your doctor tips for making the most out of your appointment. And if you haven't heard already, I just launched the Immune Confident Institute. It's my telehealth practice. I'm seeing patients already in Ohio, Colorado, Illinois, Florida, Maryland, Texas, and we're continuing to expand. So if you weren't on the wait list or you want to learn more information, just hop on over to drcarawada.com and check out all the details there. We'll have the links down below too. In the meantime, I want to know what questions do you have about skin hydration? What questions do you have about your immune system health? Share your thoughts, your experiences in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this one. Stay curious, stay compassionate keep building those connections. This is Dr. Kara Wada, and I'll see you in the next video.